Get into the action all summer long. Listen to that. Summer. Woo. The season's over. The, the NHL season's over. The NBA season's over. But there's still lots happening in sports interaction, including we got the draft coming up. We got free agency coming up for both of those sports, plus tennis, golf, whatever it is you're into, baseball, all happening right now at sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. You can bet on those things. You can bet on free agency and draft. Exactly. And we're going to actually have to throw a bunch of props up in the Dangles Doozy section as well. Um, and I'll remember, everything's uh, you can do before games, live and play all summer long. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN or download the app to get started. It's 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Uh, the cap is only going up by a million dollars um, next year. What a fucking transition. Gary suspects that the cap will jump four plus million. Mm -hmm. And mathematically, it, it sort of has to. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the That is not really totally surprising. We kind of talked about it on the show. But um, obviously, the NHL was trying to negotiate something, right? They were trying yeah. to get something out of the PA. And it's interesting because Frank Cervalli wrote today about Marty Walsh, who is the executive director of the NHL PA. So he's the guy that's going to go head to head against Gary and mm. the owners in, head to the, head. in the next toe to toe. Thing. So it, oh, they don't know what's coming. Sarah Volley says plenty of dismay <laughs> in the NHLPA circles after new union director, executive director Marty Walsh appeared in front of the NHL Board of Governor meeting yesterday. It's borderline unprecedented. Uh, the last one to do it was Paul Kelly in December 2007. Uh, he said to reference the mighty, uh, as seen in the Mighty Ducks, eating ice cream with the enemy. And um, by the way, Paul Kelly was there for like less than two years because the players hated him so much. Now, from what I have heard within the NHL, the reason that the players went with Marty Walsh, uh, Marty Walsh, who was who has done business with uh, several owners within the NHL, which is bizarre. Yeah, uh, uh, Jeremy Jacobs was a donor to his previous political campaign, right? Which I don't think is as significant as you guys think. I think it's significant. I do. I still think it's significant, but. Regardless of that, um, the the NHL players, uh, at least the ones that were invested in this, which is very few, uh, NHL P NHLPA is one of the least followed, uh, least looked after least players associations in professional sports because <laughs> the star players don't care. Um, uh, basically, they went with this guy because they don't want to fight in the next thing. They just want a continuation of the way things are. Um, they want a guy who's going to be buddies with Gary and, and they think that the soft approach to negotiation in four years is going to be the one that wins. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, Gary will cancel a season before, before he lets you get your way. We've seen it three times now. Yeah. And the players are terrified of another lockout. Right. Here's the thing that I would be terrified of. I'd be terrified of that 50, 50 revenue share. The first time they had a full season lockout and a cap. The revenue share was 57-43 in the players' mm. direction. The players had 57% of all hockey-related revenue. After the last lockout, which also lasted a season, um, or most of a season anyway, we got a piece of it. The Leafs made the playoffs, thank God. Uh, and then what happened? Then what happened? <laughs> uh, let's focus on the positive. Uh, um, I don't know. I didn't watch the end of it. That number went down 7%, and now it's a 50-50 split. Yeah. And he's going to try to think it the other way. What do you think? Where do you think the winds are blowing on that one? Well, so to connect uh, the last two things that we talked about. So there's the 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 they're not going to do the Pride Night jerseys or any of those jerseys. Um, and also the star players uh, with regard to anything to do with the NHL PA, frankly, don't give a fuck. Um, a lot of the feedback that I got uh, to tweeting about the Pride jerseys yesterday was just show up and play. That's literally your job. Show up, do your job, go home. That's what they do. That's what they do. They already do. That. In all facets, they already do it. They show up to the rink, they play, they fuck off. You can't just show up, play, and fuck off. The NBA players don't just show up, play, and fuck off. Well, when if there's a when there's a player negotiation, uh, LeBron and fucking Paul George and all those guys are out in front of the owners, going, uh, "We're not going to stand and, for this." And who was allegedly blacklisted after the 2013 lockout? Tell us, Chris Campoli gives a shit. Like all due respect, Ron Hainsey play, is, gonna, yeah. is is one. Why of was he? Why? Because he was very cantankerous uh, during the. Uh, CBA negotiations of 2012 and uh, was a marginal NHL player. Like he had, he had some seasons where he was more than that, 
But uh, by that time, he was marginal. The big guys always just leave it to whoever the fuck. They don't care. They can't be bothered. They're fat and happy. They got their you know heated driveways. They got their cottages. They got whatever they want. Um, and they're happy with their lot in life. And why wouldn't they? I mean, they're hockey players. Um, you know, they make a good salary. Um, more money than you could ever dream of. More really. money than you could ever dream of. Why uh, fight for more? Why fight? Why fight? Why fight for fair value? For the next guy. You know? Yeah. So yeah. for all the people like, you know, when we have discussions about wanting a player to take less because of the salary cap or something, this is where you got to be anal. Like this is where you got to be uh, all over them uh, because the reason uh, they're so screwed is because the Players Association either does nothing or does something and gets their teeth kicked in. And there's this triple hard cap uh stopping all the players from making any money i don't make the rules. there's a long history of players um doing what the owners want in these negotiations because later on they want jobs within the nhl they want to stick around in the club and there's a lot of guys who refuse to stand up for the rights of of their brethren the players and they get rewarded in the end by the owner side. You but, might not have needed that job working in the NHL if you actually fought while you were a player and uh, made enough money to retire anyway. A lot of the, um, um, a lot of the the guys that you see in management now, not all of them, not all of them, but uh, a lot of them either ended up in broadcast or ended up uh, in managerial circles. There was a group of players that subverted Bob Good now in two thousand four. And they and all ended up with executive jobs or they ended up on TV until they were kicked off Jeremy Roenick. There. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know who was a part of that group? Brendan Shanahan. Yep. Jerome Ginla. Unfortunately. Uh, there are a few other names in there that you would be shocked by. Um, and their whole thing was, well, let's save the season. Real tough, by the way. All of them hard nosed guys mm-hmm. who during those negotiations were baby shit. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, it'll be interesting to see with Marty Walsh in this one because the PA elected him to be buddy buddy with the NHL. So if he's going to be, which by the way is so goes against collective bargaining, I don't understand that. But if that's the direction they're going, you'll probably see a lot more of this. And uh, maybe if I give the bully my lunch money, he'll be nice to me. Appeasement never works. Appeasement never works. Um, maybe, the, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Maybe if I just don't respond, Corey Perry will leave me alone.